US media outlets, of course, reacting to this uh, historic news. This is the first time that a president, a sitting president, has withdrawn from the race so late uh, in the race. So there's a lot of uncharted territory in US politics here. We're not clear at this stage, of course, whether or not the president will endorse Kamala Harris, the vice president. Certainly uh, spoke about her in his letter thanking her, but no explicit endorsement. We'll go now to uh, Simon Marks, our US correspondent. Simon, well, it was coming, you predicted it on Friday, but nonetheless, a huge moment in US politics. Yeah, an absolutely massive moment, Corin. And, and while I thought it was coming, I did not actually think it was coming this early. Uh, there were indications over the weekend, earlier in the weekend, uh, that the Biden people wanted to wait until after a visit to Washington this week by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But this is a reflection of the pressure that has been brought to bear on Joe Biden, particularly by two people, uh, Nancy Pelosi, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, and behind the scenes, tacitly, former President Barack Obama. They have turned on their old friend and ally, and they have now essentially forced him into this position. Within the last couple of hours, surrogates for Nancy Pelosi indicated that because of Joe Biden's uh, refusal to drop out of the race up until now, she was about to raise the heat uh, further uh, under President Biden. We had a statement a few hours ago from uh, Senator Joe Manchin of Virginia, a conservative-leaning uh, Democrat, that he no longer had confidence in Joe Biden and thought that he should drop out. You'd had, uh, uh, I think, uh, nearly nearly 40 Democrats in the House of Representatives who had called for Joe Biden to go. And privately, it was said that 70 percent of the Democrat caucus on Capitol Hill wanted him out. So today, Joe Biden has uh, made history for him, for all the wrong reasons, he becomes the first president of the United States since Lyndon Baines Johnson to announce that he is not seeking re-election. Uh, but unlike LBJ, he has essentially been hounded into this position by members of his own party. And I think not only has the country witnessed internecine warfare uh, on the part of the Democratic Party, the likes of which we have not seen in the modern era. But there are going to be huge questions about how the party can forge unity between now and Election Day, given that the Biden people are absolutely furious, particularly at Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama, and of course at all those lawmakers who turned against him in the aftermath mm. of the debate. So, and the big question here now, Corin, is what happens next? Yeah. Do we, do, is there enough time uh, for there to be a contested primary, or will they have to go with Kamala Harris and the new VP? Well, the extraordinary thing about this statement that Joe Biden has put out is that there is absolutely no suggestion of an endorsement for Kamala Harris. Now, he says he's going to be addressing the nation later this week, uh, but there's no indication that he sees the race as being settled. Um, and that is going to be a, an absolute shock to Kamala Harris and her team. Only yesterday, she was campaigning in Massachusetts, insisting that there was no daylight between her and Joe Biden, that they were soldiering on shoulder to shoulder. They were going to get all the way to November together. She has shown him absolutely unstinting loyalty since that catastrophic debate appearance on June the 27th. Um, and uh, I think we'll have major questions for the president she serves because he really does need to indicate what he wants to happen. Behind the scenes, there's been a war underway. Nancy Pelosi thinks this should be an open contest. You've had other prominent Democrats like Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts who say that's nonsense. We all need to line up behind Kamala Harris. Uh, Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina, the architect of Joe Biden's election win back in 2020, said just within the last few hours that he was still backing Biden. But if Biden dropped out, he would shift his allegiance immediately to the vice president. It's also unclear, Corin, that there are any other candidates of merit willing to stand. I mean, Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan and Governor Gavin Newsom of California have both indicated uh, up until this point that they wouldn't run. Yeah, but that could change. I mean, well, it, I think that's partly. 
That, that can change. Yeah, Suddenly yeah, they'll be... Change, I think if they're called they, on... They've sensed, they, they've sensed that the election's lost. Well, I mean, w- will they also, though, see an opportunity? Uh, look, look, Simon, I mean, it's we've, we've had a little precedent of this in New Zealand where we had a uh, Andrew Little, the leader of the Labour Party, six or seven weeks out, was it, from an election, stood down, his faces were on the billboards. Jacinda Ardern uh, came in and kind of captured the moment. It is possible. Look, it's perfectly possible. It's perfectly possible to imagine a new leader being selected. But the mechanics of running an election and standing for election in the United States with respect to very, very different no, I t- I mechanics take your point. in New Zealand. It's a much, it's, it's, so it's 50 individual elections in 50 separate states. Uh, and as a result of that, um, oh, actually, there's now an updated tweet I'm just seeing from Joe Biden that says, I want to offer my full supportment, support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our wow. party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and beat Trump. Let's do this. He's just tweeted that out. So with a picture of him and Kamala walking, Kamala Harris walking through the grounds of the White House. So Biden is now, why he didn't put this in the letter, who knows, is now uh, suddenly and immediately endorsing Vice President Do you Kamala think that Harris. will be enough? Will that swing it? Well, I think, I, I, I mean, I think it, there will be such uproar from supporters of Kamala Harris uh, if she is not the nominee. And, and that is a move that's come, let's face it, 25 minutes later than it should have done from Joe Biden uh, to try and swing it. Uh, you know, I, I, the, the problem that some Democrats will have is that they have concerns about Kamala Harris and her effectiveness and her ability to go into this general campaign and defeat uh, Donald Trump. But, but those concerns apply to everybody because we saw in Milwaukee last week the Republican Party coming together, unifying around Donald Trump, despite the felony convictions, despite uh, everything that he's done in the past. And Donald Trump, supremely confident uh, about where he stands on all of this. There's been a uh, a comment from uh, former President Trump about Joe Biden. He said he is the worst president in the history of our country. He goes down as the single worst president by far in the history of our country. And Donald Trump told CNN that he thinks Vice President Harris will be easier to defeat than Biden would have been. I mean, the Democrats at this point now urgently need to line up behind an agreed candidate and they need to find a way of burying the hatchet and persuading voters uh, who have been just uh, who have just found the antics of the last three weeks so incredibly frustrating and distasteful. Kamala Harris, tell us a little bit about her for those listeners who may not be aware from California, former attorney. Um, she has been sort of uh, doing a few speeches in the last week or so, and some of them have been reasonably impressive. Yeah, she's made an enormous number of appearances on the campaign trail over the last several weeks, uh, and there have been many people that have watched her appearances. Uh, and said, if only we had a candidate like that instead of the candidate we've got. Uh, She's a former senator from California. Prior to that, she was California's attorney general. Uh, As you know, uh, the the first uh, woman and the first person of color uh, to become vice president of the United States. Uh, She has her critics. I mean, she had critics when she uh, ran uh, for the post in the Senate, Uh, Her record of dealing with criminal justice in California uh, was often uh, chided uh, by people uh, who actually said that she was not sufficiently respectful uh, of the civil rights uh, of defenders, with uh, black defendants often, uh, according to her critics, coming in for much tougher treatment than was necessary uh, when she was in that chief law enforcement position in the state of California as vice president. She suffered from a a similar problem that afflicted her when she was a senator, which is that her personnel management, her ability to keep people happy uh, in positions when they are working for her, uh, has proved to be complicated. So the office of the vice president has become a bit of a revolving door for staff. She also grumbled privately, but essentially publicly, uh, about some of the assignments that she was given by Joe Biden at the beginning of the presidency. She was not happy uh, to be handed the assignment of trying to deal with the country's immigration crisis, 
which didn't go down well with the Biden people because they argued, you're the vice president, you've got to, you've got to earn your stripes here, you've got to show your chops, and there is no bigger problem to deal with uh, than the immigration issue on the southern border. But Republicans will look at that record and they will see immediately that they can pin the crisis on America's border uh, with Mexico on Kamala Harris. So this is immediately going to see Donald Trump and uh, Senator J.D. Vance, his running mate, double down on trying to make immigration what they what Donald Trump referred to last week as the illegal invasion into the United States, the key issue in November's uh, presidential election. And she definitely has some vulnerabilities on that. But Kamala Harris will try to make uh, abortion rights the key issue in this November's uh, election because she has huge strengths uh, and has the capacity, she thinks, to try and persuade wavering voters, particularly women voters in some of the key battleground states, places like the suburbs of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, she is going to try and activate those voters to get out in November and make abortion rights the central issue that drives them to the polls. Thank you very much, Simon. We'll talk to you again. We really appreciate that. That is uh, US correspondent Simon Marks there with the news that Joe Biden is stepping out of the Democratic race. He will remain as president through the rest of his term, but there will be a new candidate for the Democrats. He has now endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, So we don't know yet whether that uh, will lead to a contested primary or not, but that is the situation at the moment.